show you how to paint this beautiful little owl. This owl was voted on by my subscribers and they asked me to do this owl next and they voted on it and got the most votes. So I'm going to show you how to do the techniques and how I got these beautiful feathers and beautiful eyes and I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's get started painting. So all you need for this painting is your primary colors of red, yellow and blue and cad yellow and cad red and some black and white. And that's all you need for this painting. And also, the brushes that you need are your bristle brush, one inch, and maybe another smaller one, and some small round brushes, and a flat synthetic brush, and uh, maybe a little filbert brush. And um, so these are the brushes. They can be like these, or you, you know, whatever you have there, small brushes and, and something to tap on your grass. And so that's it for now, so let's get started painting. Now I like to start with the eyes first. And uh, what I'm going to do is take a small round brush and we are going to just start with the eyes. So the eyes are yellow. So I'll we'll dip into some yellow and See if I can get you to see some of that. So just take some yellow paint, whatever yellow you have there. It could be cad yellow or light yellow or daffodil yellow. If it's not bright enough, just add a little bit of white to your yellow. There we go. Just mix it up. some yellow and then you're going to put that in the eye so you have the big circle and the little circle and in the big circle we'll do yellow so we'll paint in the yellow first there we go I find when you get the eyes done first and it's really nice to see the eyes first and then move on to something else. So in this one we have the whole owl drawn, but I'd like to do bit by bit. Makes it so much easier. There we go. There's the yellow. And we'll do the other eye. Yellow in the eye. Good. You need a small brush for this one. Now what we'll do next is we'll do the the black. So just put black on your small brush. Okay, and small round brush and just fill in that center. Now we may need to make the center a little bigger depending on just get so much done so far. So far, we'll make it nice and black. Try to keep the roundness. There we go. Oh, cool. Now I'm going to put some burnt umber on my, or a dark brown, on my little tiny brush, a little round brush. It's a little smaller so I can get into that corner, get around these corners here and try to stay on that line. 
So I'm going to go right around that line that we drew. If you go into the yellow, we'll fix it up. Get that on there. This might be the part where you might have a little bit of problem keeping that circle. Now you could use the template again if you like. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to come out into, into the eye anyway, out here a little bit. Just go around that. Just trying to make it as easy as I can for you. Now. Good. We'll do the other one. Let's go round, round we go. There we go. To use that line as a guide. And much done. Now I like to do the beak. So I'm going to add some burnt umber and let's see, let's see, some burnt umber and some red. And let's see, um, a little bit of white to brighten up a small bit. Just to have a shadow side of the you know, of the beak. So we'll go over this line here. On the on the right. Get that line in there. Good. Spread it out a little bit. That's the shadow side. See? Now you can wipe off your brush and your tissue and then put some yellow on your brush. And now that it's it's wet on that side, which so it will blend. Try to work a little bit wet on wet. That way it'll blend together. See, you can even move into it if you like. So we got that blended nicely there. Let's pick up some more yellow and do the other side. It's a nice little beak. That's nice, isn't it? Now, good. So this time, we're going to mix up some kind of a brown and orange. It's almost like a burnt uh, sienna. So you take some red and some yellow, equal amounts, you get an orangey color, and more yellow if you need it. More yellow than red, you get nice orange, and then some brown burnt umber and some white and we'll use that color just keep mixing it till we get to the nice brown color okay so let's mix up some yellow Yellow with a little bit of red, a little bit of brown, and we'll use that on the, the top part of the head there. 
just get something there. It's probably going to be lighter than that, but I'm just going to get a color in there. So there we go. So put that on the head. So I'm using my bigger round brush. Oops. I came outside the line. That's okay. Might need two coats. Let's get that color on first. So we'll do it in, in parts. That would be much easier than just jumping on a big pile of colors and, or one big blob of a color and then trying to work over it. So we'll just take one bit at a time. Good. Good. Now, yeah. very good. That's a nice old underpainting there now. So you want to dip into your dark brown again, your burnt umber, and just on the edges here, make it a little darker so that we'll have a shadow. Nice little shadow. Just move that into what you already did. Just move it in, don't worry. You're working wet on wet, now that will help keep everything blended. two coats we'll see now we'll just play along bit by bit step by step we got some shadow and there we go that looks good now we'll make the same color again just put your yellow a bit of red and some brown And a bit of white and we'll put that color on the face so all we're doing right now is just putting on some underpainting okay just so we can get things started there'll be feathers and highlights going on top of this just want a nice little underpainting Just using my small round brush. Leave that up here for some white under, underneath the eyes. It's going to come around here. Just leave some of that up there. Good. And around here. And here. Just an underpainting for now. You can have any color underpainting you want, um, close to the brownish colors. Brownish, orangey. Okay. Good. See, it makes it come alive, then you can start working with it. In here, I'm going to use a bit of um, white, and I'm going to add a little bit of black to it, just to gray it up a little bit. So it won't be pure white, because we want to be able to see the colors. Make it lighter, I don't want it too dark. Just a little bit of grayish color. That way we'll be able to create shadows, see? And when we put our white on. So put that on here. What we're trying to do now is just shape it up. A little bit of grayish white. A 
a little bit here and over here. Just trying to get the shape. Good. And we'll also use the same color. Um, let's see, let's see, probably here under these two lines. The next two lines. Okay. All those lines will be gone that you drew by the time we're finished, so don't worry. They will be disappeared. Now, we're getting there. Now let's add some burnt umber to our... Your brush can be dirty at this point, it's okay. So we're going to put a shadowy color underneath here. Good. Keep using small brush. Small round brush should do it. If you have problems with your brushes, just change them up. Pick brushes that will work for you. I might get a brown brush that works for me, but it may not work for you. So make sure your brush is small, but if you're having a problem with your brush, make sure you just change it up. Try another one. Another flat brush or another round brush, a smaller or bigger. There we go, that's good. Now this time you're going to get your small flat brush, synthetic, and we will put that orangey color on the body. So let's mix up, uh, let's see, let's see, some yellow, a bit of red, and a bit of burnt umber or brown or whatever color browns you got there. There we go. So let's put that color on the body for now. Now this is the easy part, just put that on there. Now it's just an underpainting so it can be changed up. I might add a little more brown to my color in order to darken up some of that. I'll be doing a second coat. So I'm just going to go up against the line. That's why I'm using a chiseled edge brush because it helps keep you controlled with the lines. There we go, that's nice. I'll get that on there. It's too yellow, just add a bit more red and a bit more brown. And a little bit of white if you feel so. Mix up your colors. Try not to get them exactly like mine. Just try to get a nice underpainting for your owl. But if you work with these colors, if they don't come out exactly like mine, please don't worry about that. Just as long as you get an underpainting on. Okay? Don't worry. Now all owls are different colors. So... I'm just going by my reference photo, and it's not exactly the same as the reference photo, because like I say, I'm not going to let the photo um, take control of me. I'm going to control what I want to do. I'm going to use the reference photo just for a reference. I could even change up the colors I wanted to, okay? So don't get caught up in your reference photo, because you can really get frustrated thinking, oh, I can't get that color exactly the same. Just do your own thing and uh, don't worry too much. You'll have more fun if you make your own decisions based on a reference photo. A reference photo just shows you the shape and what an owl looks like and the colors that the owl has in that photograph. Now that photograph might have been taken with a camera that had different... Uh, if you've seen the owl in real life, you probably would see different colors. But if the photographer took, this is off Pixabay, by the way, if the photographer took the picture, he could have used some different colors in his camera and enhanced it and did things with it. So in real life, the owl might look maybe different color altogether, you know, it might be base, something like this color, but it might, oops, it might, uh, may not be exactly the same. So this is why you have to use the reference photo just as a reference. 
You just get close to the colors fine if you like the colors. But don't get caught up in having the exact same colors. Because it's almost impossible. Well, it's not impossible, but it's uh, long and tedious. Now, when you're following a tutorial, you will be told what colors, like I'm telling you the colors I'm using. But you can still just put some colors together. Okay? Just put some colors together. Because this is just your underpainting too, okay? On this edge over here is a little bit lighter, so we'll add a little bit of white to that color that we made, just to brighten it up a little bit. I'm going to leave those lines there so I can know where the feathers are. I'm just going to leave those lines for now. I'm just going to put that under painting a little lighter on this side. So keep an eye out for your for your shadows, for your highlight, you know, where the the lightest part is and where the shadows are. That way you can get that in place too while you're at it. Alright. So it helps to keep your eyes open and see what's on the go. So, so I'm just getting Keep my colors going, just mix them up, put them on. Now, like I said, it's a little bit lighter out here, but we're still gonna need some shadow out here. So I probably got that a bit too light. So I'm gonna go back into my dark, my brown, my red, and my yellow. Just to darken it up a little bit on this edge. I'm thinking we might have a little bit of dark, but not too much. Okay. Like I said, I'm making my own decisions. I'm not doing exactly the way the picture is. And when you do it and it's done, you'll say, well, I did that. I made all my own decisions on that. It looks really good. Good. So now I'm just going to put, uh, let's see, for this part that's open here, I'm going to put a little bit of a darker color there so I can sort of separate everything. I'm going to put some brown and red together and I'll leave it at that for now and then I'm going to put that in here just to know where the feathers are separating. See, these are your first stages of a painting, so it's going to look, you know, kind of, they call it the ugly stage, but I don't call it the ugly stage. I think it's all beautiful. So let's work with that. We got the basics done, and we'll do the legs next. Let's just put together some brown and a bit of white. That's all. My brush is a little bit dirty. That's good. So I'm just going to put a little bit of brown here. It's kind of a light beige color, light cream color. And his feet are going to go down into the grass. So I'm just going to bring them down into the grass. And this one too. And we'll do some different coat, uh, like a second coat on that. I'm just going to pick up a little more brown to put in here, a little orangey color, just to put it here to know that there's some feathers underneath there. A little bit more white to highlight this one here. There we go. And the back leg, I'm just going to put a little more brown on it, just to cover it up. We'll have to do a second coat to cover up the grass. Good. See, that's all you need to put everything in place first. See? We have a lot to do, but 
It's fun getting started, isn't it? <laughs> 